welcome back friends now uh, we are proceeding to time of supply in case when there is a change in rate of gst and that is given in section 14 so have a look into this page number 28 you can see section 14 and this section 14 is applicable when there is a this section 14 is applicable when there is a change in rate between three dates what are those three dates date of date of completion date of invoice or date of payment between these three dates if there is any change in rate between these three dates if there is any change in rate then section 14 will be applicable and section 14 is divided into two 14 subsection 1 and 14 subsection 2 that is if doc that is date of completion is before change in rate then section 14 section 14 subsection 1 will be applicable suppose if date of completion is after change in rate section 14 subsection 2 is applicable that is between these three dates which three dates date of completion date of invoice and date of payment there is a change in rate in the subsection 1 is completion is before change in rate then 14 subsection 1 completion is after change in rate 14 subsection 2 so the other two will be variable invoice and payment will be variable so when supply is before change in rate that is date of completion is before change in rate we need to take invoice date or payment date whichever is earlier so this is the shortcut to remember suppose if supply is before change in rate invoice date or payment date whichever is earlier suppose if date of completion or date of supply is after change in rate then again check whether both invoice and payment comes before change in rate yes if both invoice and payment comes before change in rate again whichever is earlier if one comes before and the other after if one comes before and the other after that is invoice before payment after or payment before invoice after then whichever is later so this is the way in which you can remember section 14 then is this section 14 applicable in case of both goods and services no this is applicable only in case of services this section 14 is applicable only in case of services not in case of goods so only in case of services this is applicable and and we have a note there have a look into that note what should be considered as the date on which payment is received is it date of entry in the books or date of credit in the bank account whichever is earlier dop for section 14 is date of entry in the books or date of credit in the bank account whichever is earlier if payment is credited within four days from the change in rate if the payment is not credited within four days from the change in rate then the date of credit in the bank account only will be taken as the date of payment received so here you cannot cheat so what you will do you will make a fake entry in your books so that whichever is earlier will be at a old rate so in order to enjoy that benefit you will put a entry but entry date is relevant only the date when the payment is credited in the bank account is relevant if the payment is credited in the bank account within four days from the change in rate whichever is earlier suppose if the payment is not credited in the bank account within four days from the change in rate date of credit in the bank account only will be taken as a date of payment received so this is about section 14 and related to section 14 we have one illustration so we'll have a look into that illustration which is in solved workbook which is in solved workbook question number 13 page number for 39 pillu and co provides its building on rental basis to commercial limited for a monthly rent of 1 lakh as per the agreement rent accrues at the on the last day of the relevant month hence the service gets completed on the last day of the relevant month for may 2018 pillar and co has billed 1 lakh on 106 2018 check is received from the commercial limited on 29 5 2018 accounted in the books of pillar and co on 35 2018 see this is supply of services because they are into the business of renting renting of immovable property so with a monthly rent of 1 lakh and 
as per agreement rent accrues at on the last day of the relevant month hence the service is complete on the last day of the relevant month so what is the date of completion that every month end is the date of completion for may month pillu and co has billed 1 lakh on 162018 for may month that is the date of completion is 31-5-2018 that is the date of completion 31-5-2018 is the date of completion and what is the date on which invoice is raised 10-6-2018 10-6-2018 check is received from the commercial bank on 29-5 accounted in the books of Pillu and Co on 35 and deposit into the bank on the same day however it got trade in the bank account on 3-6-2018 due to outstation clearance now they have given the date of entry in the books and date of credit in the bank account. Meanwhile, the GST rate is changed as 18% from 12% on 1-6-2018. So there is a change in rate. Whether supply is before change in rate or after change in rate, what is the date of change in rate? Change in rate, change in rate is with effect from 1-6-2018 and supply is before change in rate. So whether we need to apply section 14 subsection 1 or 14 subsection 2, 14 subsection 1. And as per 14 subsection 1, what will be taken as the time of supply, date of invoice or date of payment, whichever is earlier. So here, date of invoice is known, but the date of payment is the criteria. If we know that, we can easily arrive. But what should be taken as the date of payment? If the payment is credited in the bank account within 4 days, from the change in rate. What is the change in rate? 1-6-2018. When it got credited in the bank account on 3-6-2018, means is it within four, 4 days? Yes, it is within 4 days. So therefore, we will take date of entry in the books or date of credit in the bank account, whichever is earlier. So therefore, what is the date on which payment is received? Here, accounted in the books is 335 and credit in the bank account is 36. So I will be taking 35 2018. So date of entry in the books or date of credit in the bank account, whichever is earlier. So therefore, what will be taken as the time of supply? The time of supply will be 35 2018. Accordingly, on 35 2018, what is the rate that is prevailing before change in rate? The old rate is prevailing, therefore 12% will be taken. Now, what would be your answer if the check got credited in the bank account on 10-6-2018? Whether the payment got credited in the bank account within 4 days from the change in rate? No, beyond 4 days from the change in rate. Then the date of credit in the bank account should be taken as the date of payment. So therefore, this is not the date of payment. Then what should be taken as the date of payment? Date of credit in the bank account. So what is the date of credit in the bank account? 10-6-2018. So date of invoice or date of credit in the bank account, both are on the same day. Therefore, 10-6-2018 will be taken as the time of supply. See here, time of supply 10-6-2018. As on 10-6-2018, what is the rate? New rate that is 18% will be applicable. So like this, you can expect a question related to change in rate here. Same can be given on the lines of 14 subsection 2 also. That is supply is made after change in rate. But on this way a question can be framed. Now, let's see some more questions related to time of supply which is in the solved workbook itself. Look into question number 18. Aman owns a departmental store and is GST registered dealer registered as normal taxpayer. Grocery items and cosmetic items of all brands are available in his store. The following information is noted from his records pertaining to December 8. So they are making supply of various goods, na? bath oil, hair cream, shampoo, uh, this uh, Educlone, shaving cream, nail polish, face powder, toothpaste, nail polish, remember like that. Lot of goods they are supplying. C wants tax invoice. No other recipient of the goods is interested in, take, uh, in, in, in tax invoice. State covering what supplies Aman can raise a consolidated tax invoice. Here, first you need to find low value supplies. So, is this a low value supply? 180 rupees is a low value supply? Yes. 10,500 is not a low value supply. 1,400 is not a low value supply. 250 is not a low value supply. Again, 110 is a low value supply. 
and 190 is a low value supply, 95 is a low value supply, 120 is a low value supply. Whereas nail polish remover is not a low value supply because the low value supply means the value of the supply should be less than 200. Here it is exactly 200, so it is not a low value supply. In that low value supplies, check which are B to C. So first one, 181, is it uh, B to B or B to C? B to C. B to C. So therefore, this will come under B to C supply. B to C. Then what about shaving cream? B to C. Uh, D nail polish. B to C. Face powder. B to B. So in case of B to B, definitely invoice to be given. So therefore, consolidated invoice will not come. So it will be definitely normal invoice. Consolidated invoice will not come. Toothpaste. Uh, so F, who is a registered dealer, say only in case of B to C supplies, a consolidated invoice concept will come. So it is again B to B. But in this case, we will be giving bill of supply, but we need to give. We need to give because the recipient is registered. And now B to C, in this case, which person requires tax invoice? C requires tax invoice, which means here also you cannot give consolidated invoice. Therefore, consolidated invoice can be given only in two cases. What are those two cases? This 180 case and this 190 case that is bath oil and nail polish. So 180 and 190. So only in the case of 180 and 190 consolidated invoice can be given. You understood? So this is related to the various documents that is involved. So on this also a question can be framed. Then next uh, we have Question number 22. Have a look into question number 22. When tax invoice should be issued in the case given below? On October 16, 2018, C Limited gives a building construction contract to A Limited contractor. A Limited will construct the building by using its own material and labor. The construction would be completed as per the plan and design supplied by C Limited. Agreed consideration for this work is 1.5 crore plus GST. The payment schedule is as follows. Installment 1, 20% is payable within 5 days of signing the contract or agreement. Installment 2, Installment 3, Installment 4, Installment 5, like that 5 installments. Casting of the first floor, second floor slab, etc, etc is completed. When the construction of the building is completed, you check June 9, 2019. When it commenced October 16, 2018, it commenced. And when it got completed June 9, 2019, so whether it takes more than three months to complete, yes, it takes more than three months to complete, which means that it is continuous supply of services. In case of continuous supply of services, what should be taken as the due date of invoice? Is it services or goods here? It is services. So covered under FCM or RCM? FCM. So we need to check whether invoice is issued within the due date or not. And what is the question about? The question is about tax invoice. They are not asking time of supply. So when the tax invoice to be issued, in case of continuous supply of service, whether due date is ascertainable from the contract, no. Then whether payment is linked to completion of an event, yes. So on or before respective completion of the event, the respective amount uh, invoice to be given. For casting of the first floor, second installment is arising. And when it is completed, November 2nd. So November 2nd, by November 2nd, invoice to be given with respect to installment 2. And with respect to installment 3, December 8. With respect to installment 4, April 8. With respect to installment 5, June 9. So that is the time limit by which invoice to be given. So this is related to section 31, due date of invoice here. Then... So this uh, are some questions related to time of supply as per our workbook. Now we will see questions for practice given by ICI. So have a look into this chapter 6 time of supply. So this is from uh, the questions for practice given by ICI. Have a look into this. Chiku Traders is a registered supplier of plastic goods. On 10th April, Chiku Traders received an order from Nilu Traders for supply of consignment of plastic goods. So whether it is supply of goods or supply of services, supply of goods. And what is the question about? Determine the time of supply. That's the question. Determine the time of supply. That's the question. So time of supply in case of goods, we need to refer to section 12. 
in that whether it is FCM or RCM. So if you look into the question, nowhere it is given that it is covered under RCM, then it is FCM. In case of FCM goods, forward charge mechanism goods, section 12, subsection 2, what should be taken as the time of supply? Due date of invoice or actual date of invoice, whichever is earlier. So what is the actual date of invoice? Easily we will get it from the question. What should be taken as a due date of invoice? We need to refer. For due date of invoice, we need to refer to section 31. Anywhere is it connected to continuous supply of goods? No, it is no way connected to continuous supply of goods. You can look into that. It is not related to continuous supply of goods. Is it sale on approval or on return basis? No, that information also we don't have in the question. So then we need to apply the general provision. General provision says whether supply involves movement of goods or supply does not involve movement of goods. That you need to identify. Please read. Chiku traders get the consignment ready. The invoice for the consignment was issued the next day. Nilu traders collect the consignment from the godown of Chiku traders. So therefore, recipient is collecting goods from the location of the supplier. Then supply does not involve movement of goods. When supply does not involve movement of goods, the date of delivery will be taken as the due date of invoice. So when are they delivering? So on 25th April, trader, Nilu traders collect the consignment. So that should be taken as the due date of invoice. Payment is irrelevant here. What is the actual date of invoice? 16th April. Therefore, we need to take due date of invoice. So 16th April is what? Actual date of invoice. 16th April is actual date of invoice. And due date of invoice is 25th April. Therefore, whichever is earlier, 16th April will be taken as the time of supply. You can see the answer. 16th April is the time of supply. What is the presentation? Very simple here. Yeah? First, you need to refer about section 12, subsection 2. That provision you need to write. Thereafter, you need to write the due date of invoice. And then you need to link the current question to those provisions so that you will get the answer. Remember, a four-point approach in presentation of answers related to these type of questions. First, you need to give the reference here, section reference. And second, you need to write the provision. Third is the discussion. So, current question, you need to link to the provision. And last, uh, conclusion, that is, what is the time of supply in this case? So, the time of supply is so on, so day. Like that, you need to present. So, what are the four-point approach? First, you need to give reference. First, you need to give reference. Then you need to give provision. You need to write provision. And third, you need to make the discussion. And finally, you need to give the conclusion. So if you follow these four steps in presentation of the answer, definitely you can expect good marks. Then look into question number two. Mr. Mahendra Sharma. An interior decorator registered at Ahmedabad, Gujarat provided service to one of his clients, XYZ Company Limited, registered at Pune. The provision of service was completed on 10 8 2000. So, what is this service? Uh, so, what is this supply? Supply of service. So, an interior decorator service. Interior decorator service. So, in case of interior decorator services, whether we have any RCM, is it covered under sir, CG, got salads? No. So it is covered under FCM. Then we need to refer to section 12 or 13. Services, no? we need to refer to section 13. Is it FCM or RCM? FCM. So 13 subsection 2. What should be taken as the time of supply? If invoice is issued within due date, invoice date or payment date, whichever is earlier. If invoice is not issued within due date, completion date or payment date, whichever is earlier. Now continue with this. So when the service is completed, 10-8-2000, 10 8 2000 like uh, service is completed so therefore invoice to be issued within what time is it continuous supply of services so when the service is completed 10 8 when the service is entered do we have any information uh, we don't have any information as to when the service is entered so therefore this is the date of completion the payment was entered in the books on 11 8 2000 this is the date of payment so what is the date of completion? 10, 8, 2000 is the date of completion. And what is the date on which payment is entered in the books? 11, 8, 2000. With effect from 16, 8. So this is a question related to change in rate here. Applicable GST rate was increased from 
five percent to twelve percent there is a change in rate however payment for the service received was credited in the bank account on 17 8 with effect from when there is a change in rate 16 8 and when the payment got credited in the bank account 17 8 so therefore as a payment got credited in the bank account within four days from the change in rate we need to take date of payment as date of entry in the books or date of credit in the bank account whichever is earlier so therefore what will be taken as the date of payment so date of payment is whichever is earlier that is 11 8 11 8 will be taken as the date of payment whereas date of completion is 10 8 date of completion is 10 8 and what is the date of invoice please see an invoice for the same was raised on 23 8 should we check the due date of invoice in this case no for section 14 you don't have to check the due date of invoice section 14 nowhere we have due date of invoice concept it is a date of invoice actual date of invoice only now what is a change in rate what is a change in rate when effect from change in rate with effect from change in rate is with effect from 16 8 so whether the supply is before change in rate or after change in rate here completion before change in rate so we need to take section 14 subsection 1 that is invoice date or payment date whichever is earlier so therefore invoice date 11 8 will be taken as the time of supply so look into this so what will be taken as a time of supply in this case 11 8 so all these are explanation even we need to we have discussed this explanation and that you need to write that is what will be taken as a time of supply as per section 14 and then you need to uh, analyze each and every point and then you need to tell time of supply is 11 8 as on 11 8 what is the rate 5 percent therefore that is the relevant rate that is applicable 5 percent then mr mahendra sharma claimed that he is liable to pay gst at 5 percent but the department took the view that uh, gst is payable at 12 percent so department view is wrong now would your answer undergo any change in the above case if the payment was credited in the bank account on 14 8 what is the change in rate what is the change in rate uh, 16 8 the payment is created in the bank account on 14 8 when the payment is created in the bank account on 14 8 so then also it will be date of entry in the book uh, like uh, the payment is created within four days so we will take date of entry in the books or date of credit in the bank account whichever is earlier what is the date of entry in the books 11 8 date of credit in the bank account 14 8 so then also the date of payment will be 11 8 and there is no change in the answer so still the time of supply will be the same consequently with other things remain the same the time of supply and applicable rate of tax will remain the same we discuss one question now it is on the same lines then look into question number three determine the time of supply from the following particulars on 8 september community hall booked for a marriage some agreed rupees 120 advance 20000 recorded in the books of accounts advance amount created in the bank account 10 september marriage held in the community hall 2nd november invoice issued for 120 indicating the balance of 1 lakh payable on 18 december and balance 1 lakh recorded in the books of accounts on 22nd december on 24 december payment 1 lakh credited to the bank account now in this situation First, we need to refer to the question and analyze whether it is goods or services. Services here. It is like renting of a hall services. And whether it is covered under FCM or RCM. Nowhere we discuss renting of immobile property under RCM. It is FCM. So therefore, 13 subsection 2. What should be taken as the time of supply? If invoice is issued within due date or if invoice is not issued within due date. So this is what service? Renting of immobile property services and it is not continuous supply of service it is not cessation of service so therefore we need to take 30 days or 45 days in that again whether it is banking and insurance services no it is normal so 30 days when the service is completed the service is completed on 2nd november when the invoice is issued 18th december is it within 30 days no it is not within 30 days not within 30 days so then what will be taken as the time of supply completion date or payment date whichever is earlier now there are two payments here first 1 lakh payment is received first 1 lakh payment is received 
uh, one lakh only na advance so what is advance for you 20000 rupees is received with respect to 20000 with respect to 20000 what is the date of invoice date not date of interest date of completion 2nd november and the date of payment is 10 september whichever is earlier is 10 september for 20000 what will be taken as the time of supply 8 september whichever is earlier na uh, that is 8 september we recorded uh, okay okay say this 8 september advanced 20000 recorded in the books of accounts but when it is created in the bank account is 10 september so whichever is earlier whichever is earlier will be taken as a date of payment received so the date of, therefore the date of payment received is 8 september or the date of entry in the books or date of credit in the bank account whichever is earlier 8 september so 2nd november or 8 september whichever is earlier with respect to 20000 it will be 8 september then look into the next one what is that next one with respect to the balance amount here with respect to the balance amount balance amount when it is recorded 22nd december it is recorded but credit in the bank account on 24 december so we need to take 22nd december or 2nd november whichever is earlier 2nd november you can see this 2nd november okay so with respect to advance or with respect to the balance date of payment or date of completion whichever is earlier date of payment in turn is date of entry in the books or date of credit in the bank account whichever is earlier so this is about the questions given on time of supply in the study material uh, in the ICI website related to questions for practice now look into invoice related this is in chapter number 10 question number 1 J a registered supplier runs a general store in Ludhiana Punjab some of the goods sold by him are exempt whereas some are taxable you are required to advise him on the following issues whether J is required to issue a tax invoice in all cases even if he is selling the goods to the end customers. Uh, there are both supplies, not taxable as well as exempted supplies. There are both taxable and exempted supplies. So in that case, whether he need to give invoice in all cases, even if he is selling goods to the end customers, if it is low value supply, not required. But otherwise, he need to give invoice. Then, J sells some exempted as well as taxable goods valuing 5000 to a school student. Is he mandatorily required to issue two separate GST documents? No. A consolidated invoice come bill of supply. Invoice come bill of supply can be given because one product is taxable, one product is exempted. J wishes to know whether it is necessary to show tax amount separately in the invoice. So this is related to section 33 here. Section 33 says, that in every tax invoice the tax component should be shown separately we can never show it as value inclusive of tax that is what section 33 says section 31 is tax invoice section 32 is prohibition from unauthorized collection of tax there are two prohibitions when you are an unregistered person you are not supposed to collect tax from the recipient that is first prohibition when you are supposed to collect say x percentage of gst you have to collect only x percentage you cannot collect more than that so excess tax cannot be collected these are the two prohibitions given in section 32 section 33 says that the tax component should be shown separately in invoice and section 34 is debit note and credit note so the concept of debit note and credit note is in 34 31 tax invoice 32 two prohibitions 33 tax component should be shown separately in invoice 34 debit notes and credit notes now related to that only we have the information okay it's a theory type question then look into case study number two question number two avatar enterprises kanpur started trading exclusively in ayurvedic medicine from july 1 its turnover exceeded 40 lakhs on october 3 the firm applied for registration on october 31 and was issued registration certificate on November 5. Examine whether any revised tax invoice can be issued in the given scenario. If the answer to your first question is an affirmative, determine the period for which the revised tax invoice can be issued. Now, this is a concept related to revised tax invoice. We discussed it in depth. First, whether the person is liable to get registered. If yes, what is the date on which he is liable to get registered? trading exclusively in ayurvedic medicines from july 1 2000 so they are exclusively engaged in making supply of goods then the threshold limit is 40 lakhs 
and when that 40 lakhs is exceeded october 3rd therefore this person is liable to get registered on october 3rd and when they make application october 31st is it within 30 days yes the application is made within 30 days then what will be taken as the effective date of registration october 3rd will be taken as the effective date of registration effective date of registration then when the registration certificate is granted registration certificate is granted on november 5 so therefore from october 3rd to november 5 whatever supplies are made with respect to those supplies a revised tax invoice can be given after november 5 within one month so that is a time limit for issuance of revised tax invoice so so for what period we need we can give revised tax invoice october 3rd to november 5th within one month from november 5th that is by december 5th the revised tax invoice to be given so we discuss one illustration on these lines so same thing is given here then look into another question discuss the provisions relating to issuance of invoice or document in the following circumstances we discuss now various documents involved so this question is related to that advance payment is received against the supply but subsequently no supplies are made as and when advance payment is received supplier has to give receipt voucher to the recipient and if that advance is returned because supply was not made if invoice is not issued a refund voucher to be given if invoice is already issued then a credit note to be given so that you need to write second goods are sent on approval for sale or on return and are removed before the supply takes place now in case of sale on approval or on return basis the supply will not happen at the time when the goods are removed for delivery but the supply takes place upon acceptance by the recipient therefore at the time when the goods are taken for delivery to the customer or recipient we need to give a delivery chalan so that details we need to write and what will be taken as the time of supply the date of acceptance by the recipient or six months from the date of removal whichever is earlier third point mr mohan provides continuous supply of services to his client where the due date of payment for such service is not ascertainable no advance has been received in this behalf so when the due date is not ascertainable we need to check as and when the payment is received if payment is linked to completion of an event on or before completion of such event will be taken as the due date of invoice and the tax invoice is issued accordingly in case of second point here first of all taking the goods we need to give delivery chalan when the supply really happens we need to give tax invoice so this is about uh, the third question with this we completed all the questions for practice as per ICI now one more concept is there and that is what will be taken as the time of supply in case of real estate transactions so that also we will discuss have a look into this have a look into this chart this chart is not there in the summary material and this chart is there in my main book so this chart if you want you can make note because uh, real estate transactions not much questions are being asked so but you cannot ignore it so i have just given vaguely in the summary material but in detail i am discussing here so if you want to make note of this chart you can pass the video and you can make note of this and i will be discussing it in a flow okay so now have a look into this what is the context we are discussing about there is a real estate builder or a developer when this real estate transactions will come under supply we discussed sale of building when entire consideration is received after completion certificate or first occupation whichever is earlier cc or fo whichever is earlier if entire consideration is received after that date then it is excluded from supply means if the flats are booked before that cc date chargeable to gst supply if the flats are booked only after cc date which is excluded from supply now whenever i say cc date we have to understand it as cc or fo whichever is earlier completion certificate date or first occupation date whichever is earlier and this builder or promoter will be making inward supply 
related to FSI TDR or long term lease that we discussed in 9 subsection 3. In 9 subsection 3 we discussed TDR or FSI or long term lease received by a builder from a landowner will be covered under supply of services and it is chargeable to GST in the hands of builder or promoter under RCM. Now I am taking the transaction. There is a landowner here. First there is a landowner. First there is a landowner. Then there is a builder. This landowner is giving supply of TDR or FSA or long term lease which is covered under RCM. Which is covered under RCM. This is the invert supply to the builder. This is the invert supply to the builder. You understood this? First there is a landowner. Then there is a builder. Landowner will give TDR, FSA or long term lease which is taxable under RCM in the hands of the builder. And this is an invert supply to the builder. Now, this builder is using this TDR, FSR long term lease in relation to residential flats. We have a proportionate exemption. What proportionate? To the extent of floor area of residential flats booked before completion certificate, it is exempted. So, value of invert supply into 18% minus exemption with respect to Residential flats booked before completion certificate or first occupation whichever is earlier. This we discussed in revision 7 exemptions chapter we discussed. If you want you can refer to revision 7. There we discussed this particular point. What is that exemption about? For example, I am liable to pay. I am a builder here. I am liable to pay GST under RCM. Na. Now, whatever GST I need to pay under RCM, I have an exemption. Proportionate exemption. What proportion is exemption? to the floor area of residential flats booked before completion certificate divided by total floor area that exemption is available and remaining I need to pay GST and that GST when I should pay that GST when I should pay whether the consideration is monetary or non-monetary I need to pay the GST based on time of supply as per special provision and what is that special provision completion certificate date or first occupation date whichever is earlier will be taken as the time of supply you understood this and then next one suppose if the TDR or FSA or long term lease is used for commercial flats whether the exemption is available no the exemption is not available when it is used for commercial flats then GST is payable full GST is payable on invert supply under RCM now if the consideration is monetary, means the builder is giving monetary consideration to the landowner, time of supply is as per normal provision. So what is that? Invert supply covered under RCM, services covered under RCM, section 13 subsection 3. What is that? Date of payment or 61st day from the date of invoice, whichever is earlier normal provision. What if that TDR or FSA or long term lease is used in relation to commercial flats and the consideration is non-monetary. So the builder is giving few flats as consideration to the landowner. In that case, the time of supply can be determined only as per special provision. Because logically, the value of this consideration can be determined when only at the time of completion. So whatever is the sale value of the flats at the time of completion, that value can only be taken. So due to that reason, CC or FO, whichever is earlier, special provision. This is in case of invert supplier. Then, outward supply of the builder is sale of flats. With respect to this outward supply of sale of flats, when GST is payable, suppose if the flats are booked before completion certificate or first occupation, whichever is earlier, then it is covered under supply. If the flats are booked after that date, then it is excluded from supply and GST is not payable. And whatever flats that got booked, before completion certificate or first occupation, there are few flats which are allotted to the landowner. As non-monetary consideration, we need to take time of supply as per special provision. Now remember, whatever flats that is given by builder to the landowner is taxable two times. How it is taxable two times? As invert supply, it is taxable under RCM. And as outward supply, it is taxable under FCM in the hands of the builder. Now, with respect to flats allotted to the landowner, he need to pay GST because he is constructing that. Na? What is the consideration for that? TDR, FSA, long term lease is the consideration. First one is supply of TDR, FSA, long term lease for which the consideration is flats. Second is 
whatever flats he is selling for visa consideration is FSA, DDR or long term lease and what will be taken as the time of supply as per special provision. What if the flats are allotted to others, normal provision that is continuous supply of services, uh, we need to determine the due date of invoice and outward supply FCM, therefore time of supply as per 13 subsection 2. Now, in this case, sir, on inward supply some GST is paid, na. can that be taken as credit for payment of GST on outward supply? No, because the outward supply of the builder is covered under rate 1.5% and 7.5% without ITC, therefore they cannot take the ITC with respect to the inward supply. Suppose if their outward supply is taxable at a rate other than 1.5% or 7.5%, then they can take ITC with respect to inward supply. So this is the discussion related to that. So you can uh, pass the video and you can make note of this chart if you need. And uh, you can expect some questions also on this year. Now have a look into question number 27 in the solved workbook. Mr. A, a landowner enters into following agreement with PQR builder. Mr. A will transfer development rights to PQR builder, enabling PQR builder to construct residential complex thereon. So Mr. A is the landowner who is giving development rights uh, to PQR builder and for which GST is payable by PQR builder under RCM. The residential complex will consist of 25 residential units. In lieu of transfer of development rights, PQR builder will hand over full constructed 10 residential units to Mr. A. So therefore the consideration is non-monetary but it is in relation to residential flats, not commercial flats. Rest to 15 residential units shall belong to PQR builder who shall be entitled to sell those in the market. Such flats were sold by builder even before the completion of construction thereof. Mention the time of supply of the transactions involved above. First, Mr. A, what is the activity transfer of development rights? What is the consideration? 10 complete residential units is the consideration. Now, this GST is payable. Now, this is in relation to construction of residential flats na? and these residential flats got booked before completion certificate which means it is exempted, exempted. If at all GST is payable then how the time of supply is to be determined as per special provision. The time of supply to be determined as per special provision that is completion certificate date or first occupation date whichever is earlier. Why it is exempted here? Yeah? Out of the 24 residential flats. 10 flats got booked before completion which is given as a consideration and remaining 15 residential units even before the completion of construction it got booked therefore it is exempted. If at all it is taxable then for which the time of supply is special provision completion certificate or first occupation whichever is earlier. Then in the hands of peak your builder what is the outward supply? Construction of 25 flats. In the 25 flats, for 10 flats which is given, sold, for which the consideration is development rights, what should be taken as the time of supply? Special provision here. With respect to remaining 15 flats, monetary consideration, some money is received, what should be taken as the time of supply as per general provision that is 13 subsection 2. So like this also a question can be expected. Okay. On the chart, whatever we have discussed, this type of question can be asked. With this, we completed revision related to invoice and time of supply. In the next lecture, we will be starting with revision 4 that is input tax credit. Thank you and please do subscribe to my channel and share these videos as much as you can to your friends. Those who wanted to get benefited, they can get benefited. And even if you have any queries, na, you can... Uh, uh, telegram there is a telegram group in that group you can join and you can post your queries or separately also uh, you can uh, contact me you can reach me and you can post your queries okay and uh, therefore uh, these queries whatever you send give me some time to reply and uh, within a span of time I will be replying to your queries and thanks a lot and uh, we will be watching the next video tomorrow thank you